because rare variation in the genome is common, it's very easy when presented with results from a genomic test to find something rare and to think, well, if it's rare, perhaps it's the cause of this rare condition. It's very easy to make a, a wrong diagnosis, to make a false positive diagnosis. One particular family that I think taught us a few lessons and emphasised some of the important points about the difficulties of genetic variant interpretation is a family that we met through testing on epilepsy genes. This family had a daughter who had a very severe early onset seizure disorder. We carried out testing with our gene panel test for epilepsy disorders and we found a very rare genetic variant in a gene called PNKP. We'd never seen a case, uh, a family with the condition before. And we saw when we looked in the literature that in fact this exact genetic variant had been reported in another family. It was very tempting and in fact using the classification criteria um, that we were using at that stage to classify this as a definitely disease causing variant in the gene. We were cautious though when we looked at it. Some of her other features weren't quite right for the condition and the, the series of events in her life and the, her progress didn't really match what we'd expect. So the first thing we did was that we issued a report that classified this variant not as one that was definitely disease causing but that we wanted to gather some more information on. And secondly, we explored what further information we could gather to be more sure about it. And it's often quite hard, I think, to be honest with families about the degree of uncertainty. They want, you, you often feel that you need to, to give them cast iron answers at the beginning. But I think we were pleased, certainly in retrospect, that we were cautious. So we looked at what was available in the medical literature about this condition. And there were two things that emerged. Firstly, the more we read, the more we were sure that we were right to be cautious. We also um, could see that in the literature there were some additional tests that you could perform on cells that might have helped us um, understand things. That would have needed her to undergo some additional um, potentially invasive procedures to get the right cell types um, and we were cautious about that because we didn't want to put her through unnecessary testing. But we also could see that there was more information out there in the testing we'd done and in time actually more information emerged. A year or so had passed by this stage, then consulted some newer databases of genetic variation. We could see that in those new databases they'd found just what we found. Actually this genetic variant was cropping up in, in healthy people in a way that just it wasn't plausible to be the cause and, and really we could move from being uncertain about this variant to being quite sure that it wasn't the cause of her condition. Our gene panel result actually then went on to show that she'd had a genetic variant in a different gene that fitted very well with her condition and we can now be quite sure is the cause of her problems. If we'd told the family that we were sure that this variant in the PNKP gene was causative of her condition. I think the family would have been unjustifiably concerned about a high chance of having another child with the same condition. And secondly, there might even be a chance of them having a genetic test for the wrong variant and acting on, on a result which actually had nothing to do with whether the child had the condition. People are making really important decisions sometimes about whether they're going to have more children or whether a, another baby might be affected with the same condition based on the information you give them. And it's very important to recognise that at the moment often there isn't enough evidence to be sure that a genetic variant is either the cause or not the cause of a condition.